want to share with you yeah. And your family, your family. The love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ So tune in, tune in And we will grow together To increase our faith with God With one touch Ministries We're touching hearts And changing lives This is the last time you got about for real 30 seconds. You got about for real 30 seconds. Give it on. The best work that you can do. The best praise that you can on today. Hallelujah, God. He is so wonderful. He is so worthy to be praised. Come on, those of you who watch it online. Hallelujah. I want you guys to know that only God can touch and change your situation. Only God. Yes, sir. <laughs> In scripture, 
reads like this. It says, and then David said to the Philistine, well, some people say Philistine or Philistine, you come to me with a sword and a spear and a shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have re uh, revolt or revealed. This day will the Lord deliver you into my hands, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. Then I will give the corpse of the Philistines camp this day to the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Yes. And then all this assembly will know that it is not by sword and spear that the Lord saves. For the battle belongs to the Lord. And he will give you into our hands. Today we are starting our sermon series, Built for the Battle. Today we are starting our sermon series, Built for the for the battle. Matter of fact, I can't even say we start today because Minister Henry, that word last night, true. I said, man, I said that. He even kicked off the whole sermon series. <laughs> he even kicked off the whole sermon series. He been taught right now. Come on here. I'm so glad that he was able to listen to the voice of the Lord. And we just had to, you know, because he's it's ministry training, you know, he, you know, we have to encourage him to be able to, you know, say, hey, do this a little better, do that a little better, work this out, this and that, so and so and so. But, you know, yesterday, listen, it was all praise since yesterday. And it seemed like that when you mess up the most, it would be the most powerful messages. <laughs> He'd be like, what? But God did deliver a word through Minister Henry and our subject title today is going to be The Battle Belongs to God. Yes. The Battle Belongs to God. So, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done this far. God, Father God, I pray, Lord, for every single person that's listening under the sound of my voice that on today they know and understand that the battle belongs to God. And we thank you, God. Now, Father God, we pray, Lord, that, uh, that, that you be glorified, may we be edified, and may the devil be horrified. I just need a few people to put in the chat, the battle belongs to God. The battle belongs to God. So listen, uh, let's look back. Uh, a little bit in this story here. I want you guys to look back in the story here, although I gave you a little scripture reference, but I want you guys to know and understand what is happening in this story here. So let's take a look back in this story a little bit. So the Philistines uh, were in battle with the nation of Israel, and along came Goliath. Goliath stood about nine feet and nine inches tall. So this man was a giant. He's almost 10 feet tall. He's about the size of these lights that we put up. That's, a, that's about 10 feet tall. Yes, yes, yes. So they called Goliath a giant. <clears throat> so he stood about, not, about 10 feet tall and challenged the nation of Israel to have one man fight. Uh -huh. uh, fight for the whole entire nation. Yeah. And so this went on for about 40 days. I was surprised about that because nobody really you know, preach and teach, they never really said that, you know, hey, that the children of Israel, they've been sitting around about 40 days trying to see who's going to fight this man. And so what happened is that um, because of the agreement that Goliath presented, he said, if Israel wins, then they will become the servants of the Philistines. And if Israel wins, well, you know what happens, they become the servants of Israel. So no man wants to step up because that's kind of a high risk. You know, that's, that's kind of a high risk. One man, one man is on the back of a whole 
entire nation. So let me just put it in today's uh, language. Uh, so you have uh, the, the President of the United States, and then you have another country, let's just take Ukraine for an example, let's take uh, Russia for an example. And then you have one person say, hey listen, send us one person from your country, and if we win, y'all got to surrender to us. Come on. But if you win, we have to surrender to you. That is a high risk. Nobody don't want to do that. It's too much of a risk. And so no, no man wanted to step up, it was too much of a risk. So one day Jesse said to David, uh, now David was the shepherd's boy, and he was the youngest out of the three brothers, his older brothers. So Jesse said, hey, go take your brothers some food. You know, then, you know, then get, get, give the captain of the, uh, 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 of the army, give him these blocks of cheese. I said, I'm going to look at one day them blocks of cheese. Them, them blocks of cheese are somewhat delicious. <laughs> uh, but everything in the Bible, it has some kind of significance. If it's in there, some type of significance, you just have to look it up. And so J Jesse told David, go take this food to your brothers that's out there on the battlefield. And get the captain some cheese. Now come back and tell me how they're doing. So I mean, you know, that sounds simple, you know. It's just like saying, hey, you tell your child, hey, go take this food to your other brother. You know, they at work, you know. And then we come back, hey, just tell them how they're doing their work. Is everything going all right? Anything you need to know about? Anything of that nature. And so what happened is that David went out, he followed the instructions of his father. So he went out there and gave the food to uh, his brothers and to the captain and everything of that nature. And so then while he was there, Goliath, he stepped up and started shouting to the children of Israel. And you can find this in 1 Samuel 17, 18, I mean 8 through 10, I'm sorry, it's 1 Samuel 17, 8 through 10 from the New Living Translation. So Goliath stood up and started shouting and taunting across to the Israelites, why are you all, uh, why are you all coming out to fight, he called. I am the Philistine champion. So he already, like, he already puffed up, he's like, yo, I'm the champion, I'm like the big dude around here. But you are the only, but you are only the servants of Saul. So he had already dis disrespected us. The, the children of Israel, he already disrespect, disrespected them by saying, you ain't nothing but Saul's servants. Not, not the nation of Israel, not you, know, you, the, you serve God. He disrespected and said, you're the servants of Saul. Choose one man to come down here and fight me. If he kills me, then we'll be your servants. And if I kill him, you will be our slaves. I defy the armies of Israel today. Send me a man who will fight me. And David heard this. He was like, yo, yo, what's going on? What, what's happening here? This is the, you mean to tell me y'all, y'all out here on the battlefront. Y'all out here fighting for us. And you mean to tell me that neither one of you guys could stand up to this man? He disrespecting our God. He's disrespecting our nation. You mean to tell me nobody can step up? And so then listen to this. This is what David's older brother said. 1 Samuel 17 and 18. He says this. His elder brother heard when he, when he spoke to the men in uh, El Elab, anger was kindled against David. And he said, why have you come down here? With whom have you left this few sheep in the wilderness? So in other words, he was trying to say, who, who, who put your sheep? You the shepherd's boy. You ain't even supposed to be down here. So why are you even down here? Jesus. Who out there um, tending to your flock while you here? Jesus. Why you why you come here saying all this crazy stuff? And so he said, I know your pride in the evil of your heart. Come on, come on. For you have come down that you might see the matter. And so he just sat there and thought, and thought about this. He was like, now wait a minute, now I just asked a question. Verse 29 says, and David said, 
What have I done now? Jesus. And so I just want to pause right there because I just want to encourage a few people here because have you ever been in a situation on, when you came to when you when you uh, decided to speak on a situation when you decide to speak a truth and you begin to wonder what did I do? You know, I see what's going on. Everybody else can see what's going on. I just sit here and I just told the truth and let you know, hey, listen, how come ain't nobody stepping up? That's it. And so, uh, uh, so you get lost, you get confused. You're like, what in the world is going on here? You're only trying to help everyone and they're pointing a finger at you. My God. Have you ever been in that situation? I'm just, no, I just came here and just ask a question. What do I do this time? I do every time I show up, something goes wrong. Now, what you mean, my pride? My pride? Matter of fact, I came here minding my own business. And then you want to point your finger at me? Talk about some my pride. And I ain't got no pride, I ain't got no pride issue. So listen, let me give you point number one on today. Don't let nobody allow you to feel like you did something wrong. Yes. Jesus. You have you have to ask for uh don't don't let nobody allow you to feel like you've done something wrong. That's my first point on today. My God, I like that, sir. You don't want to ask for the advice. I was just so happy to give it to you. So don't be going around asking me to fix your stuff. Yes. Don't be asking me about going around to fix your man. Don't ask me about uh, what to do with little Johnny when he's acting up in school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't ask me to drive you all over town and then you want to criticize my driving. Come on, sir. Don't ask me about that stuff. Don't ask me to pay one of your bills. And then you want to point the finger at me like I done something wrong? My pride. How about you? How about your pride? How about you a punk? How about that? Uh -huh. <laughs> you can't even step up. You can't even step up to this Johnny. You can't even step up to the plate. You can't even step up to the fact that you can go to the club and go tell your woman, get off the pole. You step up. Come on. You do it. You can't even tell, uh, 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 you can't even tell your, your mistress who you sleeping around with to leave you alone because I ain't leaving my wife. Oh, I'm going down somebody's street. Oh, you, you, home. you don't, you, something wrong with you? You, I, I, I just came by just a little bit just to tell a little bit of folks' business a little bit. Why did, why don't you, why didn't you start the church? Something wrong with me? How come you ain't start the church? How come you ain't, ain't put up the TV screen? How come you ain't do it? How come you ain't put yourself on TV and CNN, Word Network, and Fox Channel? How come you ain't did it yet? Why you ain't tell me, uh, 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 why, why, why you ain't tell him that if you want more of this candy, put a ring on it? Come on, come on. Why you ain't do it? Don't let nobody allow you to feel like you've done something wrong. That's right. Because they will. Because they will. Make you feel like because you ain't gave them no money that you done something wrong. I'm going to leave that alone right there. So, let's go back to our story here. Come on, Pastor. You got to preach. David goes back and reports to Saul what happened on the battlefront. And David tells King Saul, I'm going to fight Goliath. King Saul said, oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait, wait. Because y'all got to understand something about David here. David was about average height. He was young. He was a teenager. The Bible said that he was good looking. He was fair. They said he was fair skinned. Mm. Light -skinned. Yeah, he had a little light skin. Yeah, he had a light skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was Puerto Rican, no? With that good hair. With that good hair. <laughs> King Saul looked at him and was like, now wait, wait a minute. What you mean you gonna go fight? I heard about the life. This man stands about 10 feet tall. You don't know I'm gonna fight him? 
<clears throat> and so the Bible says this, 1 Samuel 17, 34 through 37, the New Living Translation. And so it says, but David persisted. Come on. Come on. This little shepherd boy persisted. He said, I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats. He said, when a lion and a, or a bear came to steal a lamb from the flock, I'll go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this to both lions and bears. And I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too. For he has defiled the armies of the living God. Yes. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear, who rescued me from this Philistine. He, that same one, who rescued me from Philistine. So I finally consented and said, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Go ahead, go ahead. Come on. You go ahead. Right. King Saul's probably thinking, now, if you get yourself killed, hey, hey. That's, no, on you. that's on you, bro. <laughs> That's it. That's on you. And so, but what was the reason why King Saul felt like that he was okay with David doing this? Because David had a testimony. He went through something. He been through something. Something have uh, something that David did. He was able to testify about what had happened. So that brings us to point number two. How you know that you are built for the battle? That you got a testimony. Yes, sir. Come on, I like that. Jesus. How do you know that you're built for the battle? You know that you're built for the battle because you got a testimony. Yes. What is the thing that you've been through? God has said that you got a testimony. What is the thing that you have suffered from? God has said that you got a testimony. What is the thing that God, that God has saved you from? That means that God has given you a testimony. How do you know that you're built for the battle? It's because God has given you a testimony that you can go back and go say, I have overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of my testimony. Yeah. David had a testimony. He, you went through what you've gone through in the past because there are still yet some battles ahead of you that you can look back over your little life and say, I have been through the storm and the rain, but I made it. I've been through heartaches and pain, but I made it. Although life has brought me down, but I have made it. Hallelujah, and thank you, Jesus. I have made it. Sometimes I feel so weak, but I have made it. I may have been cast down, but I made it. I may have been down to my last dime, but I have made it. My friends may have walked out on me, but I have made it. And you can shout hallelujah. Thank God I made it. So let's continue with the story. You're built for the battle, ladies and gentlemen, because you have a testimony. So Saul did this. So this is what Saul tried to do. Saul went to David and gave David his armor. Uh -huh. he, he said, this is what you're going to need to fight this battle. Yes, sir. So he put on his armor, put on all this stuff. When he put on all this stuff, it weighed David down. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was like, now wait a minute, I ain't used to this. Come on. I, I can't fight with all this stuff on right here. This is just a little bit too heavy. And so David, David he, he, he just told King Saul, he said, no, no, I, I, I can't face the giant like this. Because this is this isn't how I won my battles. This how, this isn't how I was built for the battles that's getting ready to come in front of me. I got to know, go with what I know what to do. Yeah. So I want to give my point number three here is this. We have ministries and churches and fivefold ministry giftings, the apostle, the prophet, the pastor, the evangelist, and the teacher. Called men and women of God who are using equipment. They never been trained to use. Ooh, I like that. Come on, Pastor. 
They're using equipment that they've never been trained to use. They're using equipment they never put on yet. They're using equipment that don't even fit them. They're using equipment because they've seen this prophet did it. They've seen the TV evangelist do it. They've seen the apostle um, do it. They called themselves apostles before his time. And have you read the Bible yet? King David was anointed king before his time, but he wasn't equipped to do the job yet. You have to know that you have been called to do a certain thing, and you may have been anointed to do a certain thing, but until you have been trained and until you have been equipped, you cannot go. So this is reason why all these so-called apostles they face it so much, they battle it so much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because they, they haven't been trained. They haven't been equipped. That's it. They haven't allowed God to be able to process them. Ooh, God, God. Yes, God. Yes, there God. is levels in this thing. Yeah, they went before their time. They went before their time. They wasn't supposed to do this stuff. No, no, no. Come on. God. And so this is what I'm trying to encourage you on today. Don't go before your time. You may be anointed to do a task, but don't do it before your time. Yes. Make sure you get yourself equipped. Make sure you get yourself trained for this battle. David was anointed king at this time. He was anointed king. He was. King Saul was still the king, but David was the up and coming king. Yeah, 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 yeah. He still honored his leader. I wish I had about 45 minutes just to preach right there. Jesus, my God. It wasn't his turn to be king yet. David had to fight the lions. David had to fight with the tigers. And David had to fight with the bears. Oh my, before he began to fight the giant. And some of you are rushing into a battle trying to face giants that you're not even equipped to face yet. David just didn't show up on the scene and say, here I am. I'm the future king, and I'm going to do this task. No, he didn't. He still had to learn about the kingly duties. David first got permission from his leader, King Saul, and Saul, after hearing the testimony, after he heard the testimony of all the things that this little shepherd boy had went through, he granted him permission. Some of you on today, you're waiting for God to grant you the permission, but you first got to find yourself a leader to train you and equip you so that when you go out into this battlefront, you don't get yourself killed. You preaching good, sir. Ye shaba. You got to make sure that you're equipped for this battle. Saul tried to give him. Now, mind you, Saul gave him the correct equipment. Saul gave him the correct equipment. He gave him the sword, the shield, and all this other kind of stuff. But David said, no. King, that's, that's not what I'm used to. Those are not the weapons that I'm supposed to use. And he went over there and he picked up five smooth stones. Oh, I felt a little preachy there. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I felt this a little bit preachy here for a second. <laughs> I wasn't going to say all of that. But listen to this really quick. And I'm almost done. I'm, I'm, I'm worn down to my fourth point now a little bit. Yeah, I had a few points today. But he said, no, I'm not. That's, that's not the weapons that I'm looking to use right now. And David went over and grabbed five smooth stones. Now let me tell you about these five smooth stones, what they represented, what I believe what they represented. They represented faith, uh -huh. they represented obedience, uh -huh. service unto the Lord, prayer, and the Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what the smooth, five smooth stones I believe represent was faith, obedience, service unto the Lord, prayer, and the Holy Ghost. My God. David's faith was, uh, was in the Lord and he knew from experience God's faithfulness. David's faith was born out of experience of God's grace and mercy in his life up until the point. And the Lord had delivered him out of dangerous situations. How many people have been delivered out of dangerous situations? 
hallelujah, dangerous situations in the past, proving his power and trustworthiness. And David relied on God to deliver him from the Philistines. Rather, it took one stone or five, David recognized that the power was not in his sling, but the Lord of hosts. So what I hear, the last scripture I'm giving to you is 1 Samuel 17, 45 through 47. It's going back to the original scripture here. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. So at this time, so David grabbed his staff and grabbed, David grabbed his slingshot. He had his five smooth stones that he put inside of his shepherd's bag. And so then David replied to the Philistines when he got back there. He said, you come to me with sword and spear and javelin. But I have come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts and the, and the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defiled. Yeah. So David was just a little, you know, he, he had some Holy Ghost inclination. And so today the Lord will conquer you and I will kill you and cut off your head. And then I will give the dead bodies of the men to the birds and the wild animals. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord has rescued his people, but not with a sword and a spear. This battle is the Lord's, and he will give us to you. So my last point is this, and then we're going to take it home here. Don't depend on your own struggles to fight your battles. This is what Minister Henry said last night. The battle is not yours. It's the Lord. So I'm here to encourage you on today that it's time for you to be able to fight your battles. God wants you to be able to fight your battles right now. Whatever the circumstance is, God wants you to know that the battle is not yours, but it belongs to the Lord. Hallelujah. Some of you are trying to do some stuff on your own. And God is saying that the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. Some of you trying to make your kids go down, trying to make sure they don't go down the wrong path. But God is saying the battle is not yours, honey. It is the Lord's. Some of you think that if you step up and try to do some stuff on your own, that honey, that's not possible for you. But with, through me, all things are possible. And the battle is not yours. It is the Lord. Crank it up just a little bit more for me. So I'm here to tell you today that the battle is not yours, but it belongs to the Lord. Some of you think that if you just did the right thing, that God will heal your body. But I'm here to tell you that there's nothing right that you can do. God is going to heal your body because He is God. God is going to touch your child's life, not because of what you've done right, but what you, what God has done right. You may thought that if you just act right, that your spouse will act right. But the battle is not yours, honey. It is the Lord's. Some of you may think that God, some kind of magical money is going to come out of the air. But God said, it's not my magic, but it's my power from on high. There's nothing that you can do. To know that God has done something. <laughs> Hallelujah. The battle is not yours, honey. It belongs to the Lord. <laughs> I want you to put that in the chat box uh, and say the battle is not mine, <laughs> but it belongs to the Lord. <laughs> Come on over here now. Oh, honey. Hallelujah. The battle doesn't belong to you, baby. <laughs> the battle belongs to the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you shall overcome. <laughs> by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony. Somebody ought to testify about the goodness of Jesus. Somebody ought to testify about the goodness of God. Somebody ought to testify how he brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Somebody needs to testify. Oh, hallelujah. The God has done great things for you in your life. The song world of writer wrote this. He said, I've seen miracles after miracles perform in my life. <laughs> you keep having miracles on me. You keep having mercy on me. <laughs> I don't even 
deserves to be alive. <laughs> but you keep your angels all around you. <laughs> and I want to take the time to say, thank you, Lord, <laughs> because I'm still alive. <laughs> Testimony. I could have been dead and gone, but Lord, you let me live on. Sometimes there's 
no reason why I began to think of the way that he meant for me. I began to think of the thoughts that opened for me. Every single door that you allow to come. Why I thank you. I couldn't tell it all. I'm just a nobody. Trying to tell everybody about somebody. Jesus came to my rescue. There's so many reasons why. The way you need to make for me. The doors that you open for me. I couldn't tell it all. How he brought me out of depression. How he brought me out of sickness. How he brought me out. He brought me out of darkness. I was on my way to a burning hell. But God Share my soul. I'm here to tell you today that God is about to do some great things for you in your life. You were built for the battle. You were built for the war. You were built for this, honey. You were built for it. Don't let nobody tell you that you were built for it. You were built for the battle. The battle is not yours. It wasn't meant for you to fight. It wasn't meant for you to stop to say nothing. It wasn't meant for you to go. Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. You picked me up and Because you were built for this. As I look back over my life and I begin to think things over, all of my good things, I weigh my bad things, and I won't complain. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you today that you were built for the battle, that you were built for the war. You already won the war. Hallelujah. Because you already won the war. Because you already won the battle. You can shout right now. You can dance right now.